All right. Hello and welcome to another Expert Insight interview. My name is John Golden from Sales Pop, online sales magazine and Pipeliner CRM, joining you from sunny San Diego. And today I'm joined by Bill McCormick, who is in sunny upstate New York. <laughs> Hi, John. Great to be with you today. Yeah, it's a, it's a balmy 58, 59 <laughs> degrees here in, in the beginning of September up here in New York. Yeah, but then you'll have the beautiful fall and all that. And I hope, obviously, I hope uh, everything's going okay with the, uh, with the hurricane and all that and everybody's around there staying safe. Yeah, it missed us, but, it, but to, south, the, to the south of us, they're, they're having some issues. Yeah. And Bill is the CSO of Social Sales Link and uh, and his passion to take what he's learned and really help people leverage social selling and LinkedIn to build stronger relationships. And what we're going to talk about today is how to be an authentic social seller. And I love this. I love this topic, uh, Bill, because um, if there's one thing that's happened over the the course of the pandemic is there's a couple of things uh, that happened particularly with linkedin right i mean linkedin really took off when the financial crisis hit in 2008 i mean i've been on it since uh, I'm, I'm i'm one of the early adopters of it but it just went to kind of plodded along for many years you know you get a couple of connections here and there and then the financial crisis suddenly everybody went on it because they were looking for jobs and now with the pandemic, everybody's at home uh, or was at home. So they just use it as a massive spamming tool. So that's why I'm really interested to hear about how you can socially, how you can authentically socially social sell, given the amount of kind of, shall we say, less than optimum behavior that has gone on. Yeah, it's been kind of sad what we what we've seen happen, but it's, you know, it's kind of a natural progression when, when you think about it. You know, back in the 70s and 80s, the telephone was the main way to, to, to communicate. And so what happened? Companies figured out a way, hey, we can call people and we can sell things. And so, you know, telemarketers jumped and then caller ID came and you could you could screen those out. And then in through the 2000s, we had email. Wow, now we can just blast people with emails, offering our product, offering our service. So we've gotten kind of used to that. And so as the pandemic came about and people had to work at home and they couldn't go meet with people, they couldn't go knock on doors and cold calling maybe wasn't working. Oh, wait a minute, I can reach out now to people on LinkedIn. And what we saw just before the pandemic was people were sending connection requests with no note at all. And if you accepted, then bam, you were hit right between the eyes with the sales pitch. Okay. Then the pandemic kicked in and somebody thought it was a great idea. You know what? I'm just going to reach out to you and I'm going to ask you to connect, John. And in my connection request, I'm going to tell you, tell you that we help companies just like you. And uh, automation has played a part in this, which is just horrific. Uh, we, can, we can talk about that. Uh, but, but really, what folks don't realize on LinkedIn that makes it different than cold calling, that makes it different from email marketing, is when you reach out to someone cold and you're, and you're pitching, what we call a connect and pitch. And what we say at Social Sales Link, a connect, a connect and pitch is a bait and switch. Mm -hmm. When you reach out to somebody like that, they see your picture, they see your name, and they see your company name, and it's much more personal. And so the people who don't respond to you are pretty much writing you off. So you're, you're really burning some bridges there. Being an authentic social seller means that we slow down our outreach to speed up our outcome. So we're reaching out to far fewer people, but we're starting more sales conversations with more of those people. And those that aren't connecting with us or, or we're not starting sales conversations with, we're not so much burning that. But they see us as a credible uh, as a credible source, but they're not um, right away reaching out to us. You know, yeah, we, yeah. we've had clients come back to us a year, two years later from some outreaches we've done to say, "Hey, now I'm ready." And and right. so that that comes back to our definition of social selling, which is building relationships, providing real value, and being a resource. Understanding that the sales will come when the time is right. Yeah, no, I, I couldn't agree more. And I think uh, on your point there about the uh, the automation, I think actually LinkedIn didn't do itself any favors either when it allowed people to do that auto reply, you know, when somebody, when you click on a connection request drives me nuts. Because to be honest, because sometimes I don't, 
immediately uh you know accept connections and i do it like maybe one day i'll go okay let, let me look at the requests i have so maybe i'll accept like four or five at a time and then it's just ding 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 with all these automated emails and it's just it's infuriating it, it is and, and linkedin is cracking down on that in fact just yesterday they they published an engineering blog about how their their engineers have developed a new artificial intelligence that's that are that will look at a user profile and how they're searching for connections and how they're connecting to people. And they're now much better able to detect automated services that are scraping data, which by the way, a lot of folks don't understand and don't realize when you sign the user agreement, when you click and you say you agree to their terms of use, you know, mm -hmm. that, that box that we checked, even though we haven't read any of it, yeah. you agree that you will not use any third-party apps. So that's Chrome extensions like DuckSoup. You know, if you're using those and LinkedIn determines you're using them, if they discover it, they'll shut your profile down. Yeah, and, yeah, and so yeah. a lot of folks don't don't realize that. And LinkedIn is really ramping up their their policing of that. So, uh, you know, be be warned if you're using automation, you may be shut down. Yeah. And the other thing I think that's really interesting, Bill, right now is that if you do take the approach that you talked about, the more thoughtful, the more careful approach, the slower approach, the less is more approach, the more authentic approach, sad, sad to say, you're going to stand out. Uh, yes, and and that's a good thing. You you will differentiate yourself from from the from the masses, and and that's part of being authentic social seller. Don't connect with people that you don't that you haven't found a context to connect with them for. Mm -hmm. You know, I tell people all the time. And listen, don't use the I call it the LinkedIn pickup line. Hey, John, I see we have some mutual connections. That's like going up to a woman in a bar saying, hey, do you come here often? It, yeah. it shows, you know, there's no creativity there. Go look at their profile, find a reason to connect with them. If you can't find a reason, then follow them and look for a reason, engage in their content, be authentic. If you say that you want to develop a relationship with me, right? And that's what we're mm -hmm. asking. Yeah. When you know this isn't Facebook, you're not asking them to be their friend. You're actually asking them to join their network, which my vet network is very valuable to me. And so I don't just let anybody into it. And so when you're doing that, give them a reason to allow you in. That's the most important thing because you're going to have access to their network. You're going to be able to see who they're connected with. And that's huge on LinkedIn. And so I'm always careful because if somebody's going to pitch to me and I allow them in my network, that means they're going to they're going to pitch to you, John, because you're in my network, yeah. and and I don't want that to happen. Yeah, no, I, I, absolutely, I, I totally agree, and I think it's uh, it's it's a uh, it, again, it's just it's just common sense if you think about it, and if you start to treat. Uh, you know, LinkedIn, uh, rather than just being an, an online tool, you start thinking about it as people. And I think that's what the problem is. We, we don't think about it or people don't think about it as people. They just think about it as a tool. And it's like, and I often think it's like, it, it means it's like walking into a face-to-face -face networking event and just shouting at everybody and just throwing your cards at them and saying, oh, Bill, uh, can I sell you something? I mean, you go, why can you get this crazy dude out of here, please? Right. And, and that's exactly what it's like, John, because that's what LinkedIn is. LinkedIn is a 365 day a week, 24 hour a day networking event. It's a place where you can go to network with people. And back in the olden days, when we used to go to real live in-person networking events, listen, I was one of those guys. I called it the, I called myself the, the, the business card slinger. You know, you walk up and you, you walk up to a group of people who are having a conversation and you inject yourself in with your business card. And hi, we help people like you and we help people like you and, yeah. people. and everybody rolls their eyes and that's what happens on, on LinkedIn. Yeah, you may get one person that responds back and says, yeah, let, let's talk. But the other 99 <laughs> rolled, rolled their eyes at you. And, and you said it, we have to start treating people on the other side of the screen, on the other side of the, of the profile, the same way we would treat them if they were on the other side of the table. Because that's, mm -hmm. that's what's really happening. It is personal and we need to make it personal. And when we show that kind of care, and we show that kind of concern right off the bat, then, then people see us as, as authentic and see us as genuine. And even if they don't need our product or service, they'll remember that. 
Yeah. So what are, you know, I couldn't agree more. So what are, what are some of the things that authentic social sellers are doing that most people are not? Well, I think it starts with the, the, the profile. You know, we, we, we teach on the five pillars of social selling. And the first is, is having a value centric profile. Don't write your profile about you because your profile is not about you. Your pro, if, if you're using LinkedIn for, for sales and for business development, your profile is about your ideal client and prospect. And so you want it to, there, there's five things that you want your profile and all pieces of content to do. You want it to resonate with your, with your ideal, with your ideal buyer. So when they land in it, they know, yes, he or she is talking to me. You want to create some curiosity. You want them to kind of lean in and go, Hmm, I want to read more. I want to know more. And then you want to teach them something new that gets them thinking differently about what it is they're going through. And then the last thing you wanna do is get more raised hands of them saying, yes, I, I wanna know more. And so, so the first thing is creating a profile that's not about you, but is about your, your ideal client and prospect. You know, the second thing is, and this is really huge for, for, for being an authentic social seller, is social listening. Mm. <laughs> as, as, as salespeople, we wanna talk about what we wanna talk about. Cause listen, John, I know what you need, and I'm going to sell it to you and I'm going to tell you about it. But that's not how it works. What we need to do is find out what is who is your end user, John, and what are they talking about? We, we mm -hmm. need to find out the questions that you want answered, you know, um, and, and so a lot of folks don't don't do that. So social listening is very important because then yeah. it comes to content and creating content that doesn't pitch, but content that creates value. And again, teaches them something. Yeah, but but to your point, Bill, the social listening takes a little bit of work, right? Because we actually have to engage you, do your research. You have to, and I think something I was talking to somebody else about recently is, is uh, you know, you also have to be authentic in that because the kind of fake engagement, like I go on to, I go on to Bill's profile, and you know, you've posted something recently, and I go, great post, Bill. <clears throat> Yeah. So when I when I when you get a great post, Bill, you know darn well I didn't read any of it. Right, and and unfortunately there are automations around that also on LinkedIn. Mm -hmm. There's these there's these there are these pods that people have that you pay to be a part of for this fake engagement, and that's not authentic at all. Mm -hmm. I love our, our friend Larry Levine. He calls that social graffiti. <laughs> it doesn't add anything to the to the to the conversations. The same as just you know giving a giving a like. But yeah, you're right. It does social listening does take some effort. All of this takes effort. But if you're not going to do it, then you're going to be left out of the game. Because listen, social's not going anywhere. You know, Microsoft mm -hmm. bought LinkedIn a few years ago for twenty six billion dollars, and it's making them money. They're not getting rid of it. It's not going anywhere. Mm -hmm. So we have to be. You know, Bryn and I were talking the other day, and and she talked about back when she was working at Dun and Bradstreet in the beginning of two thousands. Then they introduced this new thing called email, and she told her boss, "There's no way I'm going to use that. It's going to take up too much of my time." Can you imagine where we'd be today without email? Well, someday real soon, they're going to be saying that about LinkedIn and, and about, about social. So we have to figure out how to use it. And it all comes down to systems. In, in his mm -hmm. book, Atomic Habits, James Clear says, we don't rise to the level of our goals. We fall to the level of our systems. And so we yeah. have to really make a system around it. So we're doing it consistently. Yeah, no, I, I absolutely, and I, and I think that's the that's the point is about you you need to look at it. Uh, you need to look at the engagement again, as we said. You need to look at it as a person. You need to research. You need to be authentic in in your outreach and engagement. And and yeah, it, it, it's like anything else. It's the more the more interested and I would say intellectually curious you are about me, my business, what's going on, the more I'm likely to engage with you, the more uh, cookie cutter it is, the more, the more spammy, automated it looks, the less I'm going to be. Yeah, because if, if it's automated, then it's then it's not it's not personalized. Listen, I was in the pest control industry about 28 years ago, and it's on my profile. Uh, it's still listed there. Mm -hmm. So about once every two or three weeks, I get a connection request from someone who helps pest control companies grow their businesses. It says, hi, Bill, I see you're in the pest control industry. Would love to get on a call with you. Would, rather, would love to hop on Zoom with you to talk about how you can grow your pest control business. 
And I always go back to them and say, you're obviously using automation that scrapes some information that's wrong. Mm -hmm. and, 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 and they never reply back to me. They just move yeah. on to the next, yeah. to the next person. But when we're, when we're customizing things, great, great line from the, the movie, The Patriot with Mel Gibson, aim small, miss small. Mm -hmm. Right. So when you aim small, if I'm aiming at this small spot here, you know, that's the size of a silver dollar. And if I miss by an inch, I'm still well within yeah. my target. But these people that are using automation and throwing out these huge blasts that that span the globe, when they miss, they really, really miss. And, and it's inauthentic and it's not genuine. And if I can't trust you in that, how can I trust you with my pest control business or yeah. my financial my financial wealth management or whatever it is you're selling. Yeah. I was just going to say, Bill, you should develop a pest control app for LinkedIn so we can control all the people who are pests during this ah, nonstop. Ah, ah, ah. <laughs> yeah, then that would be automation. And yeah. you know, the, the best way is to just, and I, this is what I tell our clients all the time, is just ignore them. Yeah. You know, yeah. I, I reach out to them because I have something that they could use. I always say, hey, how is this a uh, uh, connection? connect and pitch working for you. If you'd like some real valuable resource that will help you leverage LinkedIn for free, uh, um, I'd be happy to share a link. Once in a while, they 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 convert over because they don't know any better. And that's the mm -hmm. sad part. Many people just don't know any better. They've got a sales manager that's breathing down their neck saying, hey, you have to make X amount of calls or X amount of contacts per day. And so they're counting them towards that towards that quota. Yeah, yeah. And then they're going on and they're just doing an advanced search and they're saying, look, there's 50,000 of your target customers on here. Like, go after them now, set up some automations and just go numbers crunch now. Yeah, yeah. And, and then there's these companies that are selling these services and they're not telling folks, oh, by the way, you risk the you you run the risk of having your your profile shut down if you if you use this. They're they're not and and that's inauthentic also. Mm -hmm. Yeah, no, very true. And I think uh, one thing, Bill, would be just good to share with people is what what happens in a case like that. Because I don't think people are aware until it happens to them um that they get locked out, they shut down, and that it ain't it's not easy to get unlocked. Right. And yeah, so what happens is so LinkedIn looks at automation and scraping the same way they look at hacking as hackers trying to access your, your profile. And so they'll shut you down. You will not have access to your profile. And many times you'll have to send proof of who you are, which is a picture of your of your mm -hmm. driver's license, a, a social security card, something to say that you are who you are. And when they get around to it, they reactivate. But listen, three strikes and you're out. We know some people that are completely permanently locked out of LinkedIn because of what of, of them not believing that LinkedIn said, hey, if you do this again, we're going to we're going to ban you from the from the platform. And so, you know, a lot of times companies you, who sell automation or say, well, we have permission from LinkedIn to use their API. That's great. That covers the company. It doesn't yeah. cover you as an individual user because you said you wouldn't use third-party apps um, or scraping tools or Google extensions. So it's it's really it's and unfortunately the the amount of time you're locked out of your account is pejorative. There's no set time. It's whenever LinkedIn feels like. It. Yeah, yeah, no, absolutely. And therefore, I mean, I really would encourage people to to take that on board and be careful of that. And as you said, um, these third-party tools aren't going to tell you this. Right. They, they, they will not, because that's not, that's not going to help them sell their, <laughs> sell their product. Yeah. Well, listen, uh, Bill, this has been fantastic. Any last words of advice for the social uh, sellers out there? Yeah. I would, I would just say, you know, when you're connecting with people, make sure you're sending a note, you're finding a context to, to do it, do it authentically, only connect from their profile. And by the way, if you're using mobile, there is a drop down in the, the three dots that will be says personalize invite. That's a, a little a little glitch there. And uh, be sure to check us out. Making Sales Social is a new podcast we just started. And uh, if they go to socialsaleslink.com slash podcast, they can see all of our episodes. I think we're up to like 13 now. Oh, excellent. Yeah, well, all of uh, all of Bill's information will be below here and the company information, um, social sales link will be below here. So I would encourage you to go check it out. Hey, as we said earlier in this conversation, good behavior and doing things properly will make you stand out. And as I said, it's sad that that's the case, but hey, take advantage of it. Do it the right way. Stand out. Right, Bill? 
Yeah, for def definitely do that. And if you're going to send me a connection request on LinkedIn, please send me a note to saying that you heard me here on sales pop. Yeah. And just, just to clarify, Bill is no longer in the pest control business. Okay. No longer. No. <laughs> Thank you. All right. Just thanks, Bill. Thank you for watching and listening. And I will see you all again soon. Thank you. Thanks, John.